Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome to the Networking Rx podcast. This is Frank Agan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. I appreciate you tuning in for another episode. Uh, we're moving along. have had lots of et- episodes, lots of interviews, lots of topics we've covered. Um, I still share the story about the first well, story first episode I recorded actually a lot of the first episodes but the very first one it took me eight hours to record because I was such a uh, perfectionist I had everything written down all my notes and the second I had a little um whatever uh, I just I pretty much started over Um, and I've come a long way right now I just kind of hit record and talk Uh, I have notes things I want to talk about uh, articles I've read from so on and so forth but uh Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for sharing. Uh, today, I want to kind of I want to share a story. I want to talk about the hidden costs of bad behavior, of bad networking, of of losing trust. Uh, for those who listen to the who those who know me or those who have listened to the very first episode, episode actually zero zero zero. Um, in that in that episode, I kind of shared my story. And for those who don't know, I was an attorney. That's how I got into. Uh, running or owning Amspirit Business Connections, I was um, just a member in the predecessor organization, had an opportunity to become its first franchisee, uh, and then ultimately buy the organization out back in late 2003. At any rate, when I started the practice of law, you're, you know, I'm trying to grow the practice, really didn't understand networking. It was a struggle. Uh, didn't I didn't have a Frank Egan in my life to try and point the way. There were you know, there were people who kind of gave clues, but there really wasn't kind of this, hey, here's this roadmap that you need to follow. So I'm out there and I'm talking with people and I'm working with people and, and networking with other attorneys uh, because they were certainly, a, you know, turned into being a great source. Nobody really told me why, but it turned out it, it was. But at any rate, uh, I don't need to get into all the details with respect to that. There was one particular attorney. I won't name the person, um, probably not listening it's not a very positive story, um, but there was one particular attorney who was very, he was a very good litigator. He was a very good litigator, very sure of himself, and for those who don't know the practice of law, very few people are courtroom attorneys. There are lots of attorneys out there, environmental attorneys, estate planning attorneys, uh, probate attorneys, um, domestic attorneys or you know divorce attorneys child custody you know we all get the same law degree but then you kind of I don't want to say specialized you're not supposed to say specialized but we all kind of have our areas of expertise areas that we're most comfortable in, especially when you get into larger cities and somebody can make a living doing nothing but trademark work or nothing but patent work or you know nothing but adoption work um when you're in a smaller city, you're kind of a jack of all trades. But anyhow, this particular person was a really good litigator. And that wasn't something that I was really interested in. Um, part of the problem with litigation is, is when you get into that, especially like, you know, criminal DUI sort of thing, you're down at the courthouse quite a bit. And there's quite a bit of standing around. And so you really need to be committed to it and have lots going on down there. Or just kind of abandon it and say, you know what, I'm going to be something else. And I wanted to be something else as an attorney. I was a business attorney. I've always, I've always loved working with small businesses, which is really why I enjoy Amspirit Business Connections because it's 100% working with businesses and helping them solve a lot of times very positive problems. So I was this business attorney, um, and I did some estate planning here and there because uh, it touched into businesses and. Uh, but at any rate, uh, this particular attorney came to me, and uh, and I had sent I had sent this particular attorney referrals, and because uh, he was a, a litigator, and I just I really thought he could help my people, and he did, he did. Uh, but he came to me at one point. He said, "I've got a client. They need this done." And it doesn't matter what this is. It was just legal stuff that he 
that this other attorney felt that I could help with. And I could. It was something I had done a lot of. So at any rate, what he did with me, he said, listen, rather than you billing my client, why don't you just do the work? We'll work it through me and you bill me and I'll pay you. I'm like, okay, fine. It doesn't matter. I mean, money's all the same. It all goes in the bank account the same. So I did the work, handed the work product off. Everything was fine. Went to his client, sent my bill and nothing. Okay. Um, you know, I don't expect to be paid right away. I did have some uh, some clients who did that. And at some point, I'll share a story about a great client who taught me a lot about how you treat your vendors. Um, but at any rate, maybe that's maybe that's for next episode, now that I'm thinking about it. But at any rate, um, and I will mention that person's name, but uh, at any rate, I didn't get paid. Um, and so 30 days into it, it's like, okay, time to send a reminder. You know, I've got kind of a an accounts receivable going and I know who owes me and, and, uh, and who's paid and so on and so forth. And I just reminded this attorney, hey, can you get me paid? Well, I haven't been paid my, by my client yet, so no. Okay, fair enough. You know, um, I don't know what's going on on that end, and um, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna consume my day with it. It, it was I, it was probably less than a thousand dollars. I'm not exactly sure. And again, it doesn't matter here nor there. It's really all the principle of things. And um, you know, so another 30 days pass, another reminder, same story, same story, you know, another 30 days, another 30 days, you know, we're out 180 days and not getting paid. And it's like, yeah, my client's not paying me. It's like, oh my God, you know, um, I, I'm not happy about the situation. I, you know, I'm not happy at all. And I guess it, it you know, at, at one point it's like, I guess I can't get mad at the attorney who's referred me because if he's not getting paid, he's not getting paid. But I didn't create the relationship. I don't know what's going on between him and his client. I don't know if he's legit not getting paid or there's some, something else going there. But my my level of trust is starting to wane a little bit on this thing. Um, but I don't want to get too consumed with it because there's other things going on. And, and uh, I've got clients that need help, need you know litigation help. Not a lot, but from time to time, those things came up. Um, and it wasn't that there was nothing coming from this person. It wasn't great stuff. And as it turned out, he did a lot of the same things I did. So it was really, it was largely one way. Um, but I wasn't going to get too concerned with that. Um, because I have clients that I need to serve and I was doing much better at that point in time. So it was, um, I just needed to serve people is really what it boiled down to. Um, about a year into it, uh, maybe a little longer, I had a, particular client come to me and um, they needed some help and it was it was an ugly situation again I'm not going to get into what it was or who they were or anything like that uh, but it was a serious litigation type situation and I called this other particular attorney I got a client who needs help I'm not going to worry about the money that's owed me I have a client that needs help because that's what you do in business is you serve your clients and you don't get hung up on other little things and uh, so introduced the, the attorney to my client and they had a, you know, they hit it off and um, I'll throw out some numbers here just to give you some context. Um, my particular client met with this attorney and they liked him and they asked if we would leave the room and we did so they could talk. Um, I had a smaller office. It was a really small office building. It couldn't have been bigger than 500 square feet, but anyhow, it's where I started out after I moved out of my home office. But at any rate, we came back in and they said, yeah, we'd like to hire you. We, and here's the, you know, the, the deal was that was put forth by this particular attorney is I will, I will charge you, you know, a hundred dollars an hour or for a flat fee of $12,500 you know, there's no limit. I'll just work it. Um, and the client came back and pulled out a checkbook and said, we're just going to pay you $12,500 because we have no idea. You know, we end up, it's worth it to us. If it goes more than that, fine. If it's settled tomorrow, it's still worth it for us. And it was an ugly situation. So at that point, I'm kind of out of the picture. Um, this particular attorney's getting twelve thousand five hundred dollars, and he's off on his merry merry way. And uh, my client's happy, and everything's happy. Well, the next day, I call this particular attorney, and I said, "Hey, can I get my bill paid? Um, I know you got money. You know, I don't know what's going on with this other client, whether he's paid you or not. But you know." And this particular attorney was like, uh, "No, I don't have the money." 
What do you mean you don't have the money? You know, I just don't have the money. The money that I was given yesterday, I need it for other things, and I don't have the money. It's like, holy crap. And at that point, I'm really aggravated. I'm just really aggravated. I, and I, uh, I'm, maybe I'm too nice, but I'm not going to take him to task. I'm like, okay, fine, fine. Um, we hung up the phone, and that, I just accepted it. It wasn't sitting well. It was festering. It was festering. But I'm going to get on with my day because you don't worry about the nickels and dimes at your feet when there are potential dial- dollars flowing over your head. So I'm out trying to get clients and grow my practice and serve the clients that I have, the clients that are paying me. Um, about six months later, I had a client come to me, and they had a situation. They were a business client, and they had a situation. They needed a litigator. They needed a litigator. And um, I knew this other particular attorney did a lot of what they needed help with. I knew he could help them. I knew I knew this was kind of a perfect fit. Um, and I really didn't know a whole lot of litigators at, at that point in time. But I was really kind of mad about this money that I was owed. This is 18 months after the fact. And uh, so I called this particular attorney up and I just said, hey, I got a great referral for you. And he was like, oh, really good. What? Um, and I just said, I'm not going to give it to you. Well, why? Because you owe me money. You know, you, and I reminded him, you, I did this work for you 18 months ago, and I don't know what's going on, but all along you've gotten paid. Uh, within 30 minutes, he was at my office with a check and got me paid. And I referred the client to him and everything went on. Um, but I still, I still, in the back of my mind, it's like I had to go to all that work to make things right. I had to go through all that work, um, you know, and you might look at me and laugh and say, well, Frank, you're, you're dumb. You know, you, this person, this person, this other attorney got you, got all this business. And I don't know what the second, you know, I, the one I saw the 12,500, I don't know what the second one was. I don't know what any of the referrals that I'd given him over time. Um, I got my money and, but any, you know, yeah, I was, you know, I feel bad about it. Um, I was too nice about it. I should have never set up the arrangement that I set up. Shame on me. Um, and you can kind of look at the situation. So he got one over on you. And and I, and yeah, it, I guess. Until I finish telling the rest of the story. Um, because it wasn't too long after that that I had a business client that had another real mess. Um, and that's the nature. Businesses get into problems. They get into these problems. Um, not all of them, but many of them get into problems. That's why they're coming to attorneys. I mean, people go to the doctors because they're sick. They're not generally going there because they're healthy and just to brag about, I'm going to show up every three months just to brag about how healthy I am. They're showing up because they got ailments and people coming to attorneys generally have issues. Um, they have issues growing, doing it right, or they've messed it up and they need help fixing it. And this particular attorney had a mess. It was a mess. It was going to federal court, so on and so forth. And I didn't do it consciously because I didn't, you know, but this attorney that had owed me money, I just kind of had written him off. He wasn't on my radar anymore. Um, And I thought about this after the fact because there were a couple instances where I had some, I had some, I had some clients with some real messes. Um, And I became privy to how big those messes became because the messes essentially they went to bankruptcy court. They didn't they didn't do Chapter Seven liquidation. They just had to reorganize. And I, I won't get into the bankruptcy laws here. Um, it didn't kill them, but they needed the help of the bankruptcy court to say, "Hey, stop the creditors from coming after me." That's really what the bankruptcy court's about. Um, so I was privy to all the legal bills that had happened over over the time, um, and it was well in excess of a quarter million dollars. And these attorneys got paid because the bankruptcy courts are generally attorneys write those laws. You know, attorneys are going to ensure they get sure they get paid. Um, I was owed money. I got paid. Um, These attorneys got paid. And um, I won't get it and get into the laws. I won't get into the right or wrong of it. But the point I want to make is, is that this attorney that I had to chase for 18 months for something that amounted to less than a thousand dollars missed out on all of that. He missed out on all of that. And he doesn't even know that he missed out on it. That's the hidden cost of not behaving properly. And I think that's something that we need to keep in mind as we're out there dealing with people. 
we tend to calculate things on what's observable. You know, okay, if I'm late, it's no big deal because this person is really of not great consequence to me. Um, or if I, you know, I have people who just don't show up for my podcast um, or people who, you know, do something and, and uh, I go on and on with, with different examples of, you know, just people not behaving properly. You know, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be generous with my time and talent in this situation. Um, I'm not going to make this introduction. Uh, you know, I'm not going to thank somebody. All these little things, and we think, well, there's no real big deal because this person's of no consequence. But here's the reality: is we don't know. We don't know what we're missing out on. We don't know what the hidden cost of that bad behavior is. And this particular attorney I'm talking about, I run into him from time to time, and I have to chuckle, not outwardly, but just kind of, wow, you missed out on so much. I mean, ultimately, I got my money. I guess I didn't get the, I didn't get to invest the money for that time. I should have got interest. I didn't get interest. Um, and I had to really work. I had to probably put as much effort in getting paid as I did in doing the work. Um, so from that standpoint, I do feel bad. Um, I do feel cheated a little bit, but who's the big loser in all of this? I, wasn't me. I served my clients. It wasn't, you know, I got great clients. I had clients referring me clients. Um, so anyhow, I want, don't want to dwell on that too much. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat people in your relationships, because this is all tied to networking. This is all tied to referrals. And because if you don't treat people correctly, it's going to impact you. And you really don't know to what extent it's going to impact you. That's the hidden cost of behaving badly. Think about that as you uh, you move throughout the day. Uh, just to quickly wrap up, we're looking to grow our team. We're looking for people to become franchisees in Amspirit Business Connections. Um, or if you know somebody out there who just wants to start a chapter, that's fine too. We'll help them just get a chapter started. Uh, contact me using the email that we give in the end of the podcast, uh, which will be here shortly. Um, or you can pick it up in the show notes. My email's in there and uh, have them reach out to me. Um, or give me their email. The best thing you can always do is to email them, copy me in on it and uh, introduce us and we'll take it from there Um, if it goes somewhere great if it doesn't that's okay too it's it's good to connect with people thanks for joining us on the networking rx podcast please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions comments or ideas for future topics you can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com that's a-m-s-p-i-r-i-t.com Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.